Nothing changed the world of mobility like deployment or the steam-based railroad system in the 19th century. Hello everybody, this is another episode of our coverage of this year's Global Public Transport Summit in Montreal, Canada. And just like railway changed the world then, automated vehicles will do today. My guest today addresses these changes by saying, think systemic. Today he will share his opinions, experiences and outlooks on the one of today's most urgent topics in public transportation. Welcome Markus Zwick, the head of innovative mobility solutions at Siemens Mobility in Munich. Hello Markus. Hi Martin. Markus, the changes in the history of mobility were systemic. Why do you think we have to think as big as the pioneers did? Because people always like to be mobile. It began thousands of years ago, so we invented the wheel, we used horses, we invented the, the steam engine and used it for locomotives, so long, time, uh, long, long distance travel was possible. Um, when we invented the car, and now next step would be that we make the traffic systems more intelligent. That means, and that is the super hype for the time being, that is self-driving cars. And that gives us the opportunity to, to approach the transportation issue more systemic. That means we combine infrastructure and we combine the information we get out of the cars. Traffic in urban areas is getting denser. The number of cars still grows. Pollution, congestions, low quality of life are the results. People want clear alternatives for solving these problems. Reduced to two options. What would they be? Yeah, that is, the, that is the real issue. I mean, we, we need to have the, this ease of transportation. You don't, you don't like to waste your time in a traffic jam. Um, so we have two, um, um, two options. It could be that we uh, build more roads, build more infrastructure. That is what we don't know. Uh, <laughs> that is what we don't like to have because it's, it will be awfully expensive. Yeah. And for example, we don't have any room available in high dense area, so it's not possible. Um, the next option would be we make the traffic more intelligent, so we need a more systemic approach on, this, um, on the traffic issue. It's not that we only have these self-driving cars, for example, driving alone, um, not controlled or steered from a, from a control center. Um, we would need sort of a, a higher level of optimization or the possibility to optimize uh, the traffic and that needs more information about the traffic situation, that needs more information where you like to go because the, the travel, your travel uh, begins in the morning when you leave your bed, if you open your door and when the travel begins and, it, it's, and you will immediately see what is the situation on the road. So here the optimization uh, level begins we, we need to optimize um, sort of the throughput on the road but, and by the same time um, it should be convenient, uh, convenient as possible. So what in your opinion is the direction we need to push the current developments of vehicles or even autonomous transportation systems? Yeah. Um, in, in our opinion and, and again, we, we need to approach um, this transportation issue more systemic, like we already do, do on the railway side. And here on the road side, we have a huge optimization uh, opportunity. And that is that we bring more intelligence on the road. We, are, we have already intelligent system, but it's not interconnected. More or less, the, the cars are driving alone and, and we have our our traffic lights and, and the traffic management system. And if we combine these more efficiently, we could optimize the traffic flow on the one hand side and ensure um, the safety of such a transportation level or make it even better. Because mm -hmm. we would have the, for the very first time, we would have the, the opportunity to foresee what is happening on the, on the road. Um, we would, for example, recognize if a traffic jam will occur and, and when I would reroute the, the traffic or the individual car, mm -hmm. that is the traffic optimization, for example, um, 
and by the same time we could upraise the, the, the safety level mm -hmm. because for example also for example we would see um, um, little moving objects and with our learning algorithms we would say okay we have children on the road mm -hmm. please drive slowly because even if you have a self-driving car you would have physically the same braking distance it's very interesting so you have been working on such a system for four mm. years mm. now uh, it is a system that is called Munich Advanced Parking Management Project. Do you mind to tell us in brief um, what and why you were installing a radar system to get it to work? Yeah, that, that was for my team uh, sort of the, the very first step to making roads more intelligent. And as, as we all know, looking for a parking lot, you, you don't have fun driving around and, and uh, for, for hours, mm -hmm. um, looking for a parking lot. So we, we, we said we, we should go there and, and looking for um, a technology solution to make it more efficient and by the same time for more convenient uh, finding a parking lot because more or less 30% of traffic in an in a, in a inner city area is looking for a parking lot. Um, and so that, that makes driving more convenient. Mm -hmm. You will easily more f uh, easily uh, find um, a parking lot, and by the same time, it could be sort of an income lever for the cities at itself, yeah. and a strategic lever to steer the traffic on the road. So we invented um, a radar-based system. So we invented a radar sensor looking from above on the road or on on the parking area and seeing parking lot available or not. This information we hand out to a control center and this information now is distributed over the cloud um, to you as a driver mm -hmm. um, or to the city itself. And um, the reaction of the, of the, of the cities, that was overwhelming. I, I mean, we began in Munich, we have an installation in Berlin and um, all we, we, we have a, a pilot installation in Dubai, we, we were asked from China and Paris. So for us that was a real success story and as I said, um, the very first beginning of making the road more intelligent because our radar sensor not only sees if a parking lot is available or not, it, it's overlooking a certain area mm -hmm. and here we see what is the situation on the, on the road. So, do we see children, do we see bikes driving, do we see cars? And that brings us now to, to the mentioned uh, systemic approach. Because if you like to steer something, you, you need to have information about what is going on on the road, for example. And that is our uh, radar, radar system, mm -hmm. but not only the radar system, I mean we will um, we will, um, the development is, is going on and proceeding and we are looking for, for example, LiDAR sensors and, and, and what is available on the market. And here we combine the existing stuff um, to, ha to have the best information what is going on on the road mm -hmm. and use this information for optimization and enhancing uh, the safety level. Very interesting. I will think the system now, the change needs to be done with a holistic approach. Uh, from your knowledge, which aspects should the regulatory framework for automated vehicles cover? Yeah, um, still we, we have some basic issues to solve. That is not only the, the, the semen side, but it's also on, on the legal side. Still, it's not allowed um, that you have no driver on board of a self-driving mm -hmm. vehicle, mm -hmm. still you need a driver who can interfere if, if, the, if the vehicle don't know what to do. Um, but here with our infrastructure support, we, we could sort of ease this uh, approach and, and having self-driving vehicles um, earlier on, on the road. Mm -hmm. That is now because um, we could be sort of a redundancy level. We, we, we would see as the car looks on the road, we would, we, we, do, we would do the same. And by combining this information, we enrich the information, uh, by combining this information, um, we, we would see much more and more precisely what is happening on the road. So that would enhance the, the, um, the solution or a self-driving vehicle or a self-driving transportation system. 
Yes, and, and by the same time, um, here we would need uh, the help of the cities itself where we need to push these um, self-driving uh, transportation modes. Um, here, you, you, you might know this, this, this word, mobility as a service. Um, for you, uh, as, 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 uh, as a citizen, it's, it's not only... I, I mean, if you're living in Munich, mm -hmm. you won't need any car or own a car. It's, it's just the, the, the vehicle standing around. So, but um, you like to have a convenient travel. Yeah. You, you, you like to be mobile. So uh, here, mobility as a service um, comes into place. And um, what here helps a lot is sort of a digital layer to help you to organize uh, your, your mobility. Mm -hmm. That is where we also work on. By which year do you think fully automated driving will be deployed on a global scale? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, uh, to be honest, you, you need to ask the, the automotive industry, but they say um, it, it comes into place in, in the next uh, two to three years. We will, we will see self-driving vehicles on the, on the highways. Um, and then it, it sort of goes down and, and uh, you will have the next step would be, and that is, but that is very complex, um, you, you will have um, self-driving vehicles in mm -hmm. dense or city areas and which that is very high complex. So I would say in, in, in five years time we will have the, the very first self-driving vehicles on the road. Thank you very much for the systemic information on your work, research and new perspectives on our mobility. Markus Zwick, everyone, um, find out more details about the 2017 summit on Twitter, please, or YouTube, or Siemens.com. Always keep in mind to follow, like or share us. Bye bye, that's it for today and thanks for watching. <laughs>